Hi there. If you're watching this, you are probably starting or about to start a new orchestral season. Maybe you just received your orchestra parts a few weeks ahead of your first rehearsal, or maybe you sat down for your first rehearsal and had some new music dropped in front of you. It's normal to be unclear as to how to prepare for an orchestral part, so um, I'll share some of the lessons I've learned over the years. When it comes down to it, there are two ways to approach your orchestral parts. The first is simply sight reading and learning the material at the rehearsal. If you're playing in an orchestra that's well below your level, this can work fine. The second way is to break your part into sections and comb through it, thus preparing your material. If you are playing in an orchestra that challenges you, this is the way to go. Either way, you want to make sure you are prepared and contributing to your group or ensemble. If not, you'll be disrupting rehearsals with fake notes, wrong notes, and you'll feel stressed week after week. Taking the time to learn how to prepare properly with a youth orchestra is invaluable. If the orchestra or ensemble you're playing with challenges you, it's best to learn your part entirely by the first rehearsal. Yes, entirely. If you do, you'll enjoy your rehearsal process from the very first moment. You'll be an asset to the orchestra, you'll have more capacity to focus on quality of playing rather than simply surviving the rehearsals. You'll have to do this preparation work anyway, so you may as well do it in advance rather than scrambling to catch up with the material once the rehearsals start, or worse yet, just before the concert. So how do you prepare your part? Let's imagine you received your part four weeks in advance and create a practice plan. For the purpose of this video, I'll demonstrate on an intermediate level orchestra part. The principles of practice are the same for beginning or intermediate or advanced orchestras, but I'll include a link in the description below uh, to a second video addressing some of the techniques for preparing a more advanced orchestral part. Let's take a look at this piece. This is the Algerian Suite by Camille Sensan first movement. Since we have four weeks to prepare, we're going to divide this piece into four large areas. If there are rehearsal numbers or letters around where we need uh, to mark an area, then that's a good place to mark. Otherwise, you can simply look for the ends of phrases. Ultimately, it's not too important. As long as we section up our work, uh, it gives us what we need for a practice plan and we can get to work. So for this piece, I'm going to uh, split these two pages into four large areas. So I'm looking at about half a page at a time. Looks like we have some uh, moving material here and then some easy material here. So I'm just going to arbitrarily put a line right here. This is a good place for a section marker. Um, maybe go to the end of the page is fine, just to, just to keep it with that. It looks like this pattern continues here. So it looks like if I kind of learn this, I'll get a head start on all of this. Uh, we've got some interesting things going on here. This looks like it'll take some work. So I will probably put another section marker right here, or rather an area marker. And then um, I will put my final area marker at the end of the second page right here. It goes on, but for now, I'm just going to um, use two pages as an example. So we're going to pretend this is a two page piece. So I have four areas, area one, area two, area three, area four. Already the idea of learning one piece just feels a lot easier because if all I have to do is learn this one week and then this another week and then this a third week and then this a fourth week, this is there's plenty of time for me this week to take a look at, for example, this part right here uh, and learn it one day, review it for a few days, work up some tempos, and I'll, I'll show you what else we do in, in just a moment. Look at the area and ask yourself, does learning this all at once look like an easy, medium, or difficult task? and split it into uh, small enough sections that they feel easy for you. This is a really important word because your brain processes things much more quickly in chunks that feel easy. Don't split it into things that feel medium difficult. Take something and if for your personal level, four bars is easy, but you know eight bars is already moderate difficulty, just take four bar sections and we'll see why in just a moment. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to split it into probably about four sections. So uh, I'm going to go to about here because it looks like this pattern starts to change. So here's like my first section. Um, here's my second section. Um, and I guess I could mark another section here, but this looks like all just really long notes. I'll do that. I'll mark another section here. So I just have a fourth section right there. So once you have your sections marked, I actually recommend, if you're looking at your practice week, if we're looking at, okay, I'm going to learn this 
this week, I le recommend learning everything the first day. Just put in the time, that'll be your heaviest practice day, and learn it all. Because reviewing it then takes much less time the rest of the week. So you have kind of like one heavy practice day and then some lighter practice days. But if you like, you can kind of separate them one after the other and spread it out over the week. That's fine too. So you want to start with combing through the area and checking your notes. Did you catch all the accidentals? How is your intonation? And afterwards, you can add the Boeings and the approximate rhythm. And I say approximate rhythm because unless it's checked with the metronome, it can only be approximate. So I'm just going to play through. I'm actually going to strategize here a little bit. I'm going to take a look at this section. It looks like it's a little bit more tricky than maybe the other three. I'm going to learn the hard one first. So. <laughs> So I'm just going to start with just playing everything all separate bows and checking my notes. I don't need to um, I need to add the rhythm and bowings yet. We're just going to get started on this. <laughs> section. I'm going to repeat that a few times until I feel like I know where all the notes go. Um, after I feel like I have a good idea of the notes, it might take me three, four, or five times, you know, depending on how difficult the notes are in that section. Uh, I will add the bowings. So. So I took time for my shifts, you know, I made sure that I reached everything I needed to. Um, and so I feel like now I know my, my notes and my, my bowings. Um, again, approximate rhythm. Um, it's very important to note that orchestral music is prepared with a metronome. Uh, even if you have excellent internal rhythm, following an external beat is crucial for doing well in orchestra. Um, when you play in an orchestra, you don't play your own tempo, you don't tap your own tempo together with everyone else tapping their own tempo. There's one external heartbeat of the music that everyone's following and that can be you know, delivered by the conductor or if it's a conductorless orchestra that everyone feels it together. Uh, but it's not your own tempo. So what you do is you use a metronome marking to find your final practice tempo or what I like to call a working speed. So listen to a good recording of your piece, and about 80% of that tempo will be your working speed. So for example, if a piece moves at a quarter equals 100, uh, the working tempo should be quarter equals 80. That will get you pretty well prepared for a first rehearsal. Um, unless you're playing in a professional orchestra, you know, having a close to full tempo uh, is plenty for the first rehearsal. You have enough flexibility to go faster if you need to, but if you don't, you'll be okay. Um, you can start slower when you're actually practicing your part. You can start at quarter equals 50 or 60, but you want to work your way up to the full tempo. So I'm just going to take that same passage that I looked at. I'm going to turn my metronome. And I'm going to say, okay, well, maybe... So that's, that's my full tempo, which would be something like ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. So that's pretty quick. That's nowhere close to where I was you know, playing when I was reading it. So I bring it down to 80. I get... Ta 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 And that sounds, you know, more reasonable, but it's still probably faster than I want to start. So I'm going to start at 60. That's pretty reasonable. So I give it a couple tries at 60. So I'm going to bump it up to 70. And so on. I, I continue on until I get to 80. If you need to start slower than 60, start slower than 60. If you need to start at a half tempo counting eighth notes, start at a half tempo counting eighth notes and just work your way up. It just depends on the difficulty of the passage. If you feel like a passage is too difficult to get to working tempo on the first day, you do have a few more days to work it up. So the next day, instead of just reviewing it, continue your metronome work. Then it's a simple math game. Check how long it took you to learn a section. For this section, for an average intermediate cellist, 
it might take you a few minutes to play through a few tries of just the notes and then the rhythm and bowings and do the workup. You might be looking at, you know, 15 minutes at the most to look at a section like this, even if this is a really challenging section for you. And let's say there are four sections in our area. So there's four, one, two, three, four. Uh, we can spread that out. It'll take us about an hour to learn the whole thing. And of course, when we review it, it'll take much less. So it looks like it'll take us four hours total to learn everything in the entire two pages. Assuming I'm kind of pretending this is just one page right now. It's going to be about an hour to learn the here, an hour to learn to here, and then an hour to learn the rest with these scales here down at the bottom. Uh, some sections might take less time because it turns out they're easier. Some might take more time because it turns out they're harder. But this just gives you a ballpark. Um, so an hour a week to learn the material and a little bit to review every day for this one piece, not so big a deal. If you have multiple pieces like this, simply apply the formula and adjust your practice time and your practice plan. If you have four pieces like this and they're very challenging for you, it might take you four hours to learn you know, a, a week's worth of work. So you might have to spread that out over the week and then review little by little. You know, Again, a good strategy is to take difficult sections and do them early in the week. Keep in mind also that once you know it at full tempo, playing it over and over at, at a full tempo or even a working tempo is really not the most productive thing. Uh, you will get your best quality work done at slower tempo. So once you know you can play it at working tempo, bring it back down to a slower tempo and work on your vibrato and your articulation, anything that you think will increase the quality of the music. If you got your orchestral part in the first rehearsal, that simply means you might want to crank up the orchestral music practice to catch up. Try to fit your material work into two weeks so you're caught up soon. Make sure your private teacher knows that you have incoming orchestra parts. I usually give my students a couple weeks of reprieve from solo work uh, when there's a new season of orchestra. Uh, yes, you have to put in a lot of the work up front, but really you get to enjoy the rest of the season instead of suffer through it. Uh, again, just keep in mind, this is something you'll have to do anyway. You'll have to do all this work. You can do it at the end of the season, cranking and preparing for the concert uh, when you're stressed out and realize that you haven't been contributing much the whole season. Or you can do it up front and just learn what it's like to play with an excellent ensemble. Just a couple notes on when rehearsals begin. Uh, you'll notice that some sections are harder to play in the context of an ensemble than by yourself in the practice room. You might have gotten the passage just fine by yourself and then as soon as the orchestra all starts up, uh, it turns out it's actually quite difficult to keep up on a passage or count it correctly or, or whatever it is. Uh, so what I recommend doing is uh, if it's clear that a spot needs a little bit more attention, just mark it with an X in the margin. I'll say all these sections are really difficult to count, and it turns out I did it just fine with the metronome, but then when I, in rehearsal I got lost immediately. So you know I'm going to put an X in the margin, and I'm just going to maybe mark R for rhythm or counting or something. Um, and then let's say you know this passage here. Uh, I just couldn't quite get the sound I wanted. I just, I was frantic with the notes and I'm supposed to build my sound and I just couldn't, so I'm going to put X with an S. So this way I know when I practice, I don't have to review all of this anymore because everything else came out fine. Unless the conductor says, you know, please work on this section, we're going to increase our tempo. Um, you know, I only know that personally for me, I just have these couple spots. I'm not going to review uh, my orchestra music anymore once the season starts, unless I need to, but I am going to check my spots. So as soon as I you know, practice those spots, and maybe next week I go to rehearsal, and they come out just fine, I'm just going to you know, scratch them out or erase them, and then I know that I'm completely prepared. Occasionally you run into some very high maintenance passages, passages that just no matter how many times you practice them by the first rehearsal, they're still a problem. And uh, there are passages that take many, many weeks or sometimes months to really get in your fingers, feel like they're just completely internalized. And so for those, you know, I would mark like an X with a circle around it. Um, and I know I'm just, those are special spots. I will probably even put them in my solo repertoire. Just as soon as I finish my scales and exercises before I get to my solo repertoire, I'm going to go through those. I need to do those every day for the rest of the season maybe that are just spectacularly fast or very difficult string changes until they're completely in my fingers and maybe I'll remove them. Those are every now and then you run across an orchestral piece with that kind of difficulty in it. So lastly, you know, a good orchestral player takes time to do some research. Find several, not just one, recordings of your piece. Performed by great orchestras and great conductors. 
read up on the background of the composer or watch a documentary. Just, you know, type their name in the documentary into the YouTube search bar. Um, find an orchestral score if you can and look at what's going on in the other parts. Just open up your score, listen to those great recordings, and listen to what's going on in other sections besides yours. If you're a cellist, listen to the bassoons and the winds and the brass and figure out what the inner voices like the second violins and violas are doing. It doesn't take long and it's really quite enjoyable. Uh, keep in mind that an orchestra is like any team. When all the members are preparing and helping each other, they operate phenomenally. Uh, when even one team member is not prepared, they're going to hurt the overall team and everyone else has to work harder to cover up their shortcomings. Uh, don't be that person. Uh, prepare your part. You're, you're never going to prepare it perfectly, but there's just a great strategy to start taking a look at your material and you know, showing up to rehearsal with a high amount of integrity. It's an amazing thing to sit in an ensemble where everyone plays like that. So that's it. If you have any questions, ask your conductor, your coaches, your private teacher, or leave a comment in the video. I'll try and get to all the questions that I can. Get cracking, get prepared, and have a great orchestra season.